unbelievable. Lina will now attempt to do something unique. She will uh, access a very specific state mm, and enter mm, into the field of mind. Now this is a star. Correct. Mm -hmm. mm. Three waves. Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh, this complicated shape. I don't know how to say it in English. I see one, two, three, four, five, six angles and lines uh, yeah. that. Uh, Kapanski, yeah. hexagon, no? Hexagon. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Same in English. Hexagon. Hexagon. Correct. Something like this. Hexagon. Now I'm gonna put on Marina one more layer, a thick black layer, just to make sure that what is happening is happening in her mind. She's not using her eyes to see. Okay, Marina, I'm gonna put you this uh, blindfold on. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Marina, mm -hmm. would you also be able to tell me colors? Let's try. Let's try. Mm -hmm. This is a star and it's yellow. Correct. It's amazing. Not just you see, but you also distinguish colors. This is the square, uh, orange. Correct. Marina, do you want to try with the book? Yes. I'll go get it. Oh, well. Perf perform, I think. Perform the following two protect the vehicle. I'll record and then we'll have a we'll have a backup. Okay. Got it. And I'll just do a short intro and then you can introduce the guests here. Let's see. Hang on. Record. Hang on. Hang on. What the heck's going on? Oh, there we go. Okay. And I'm going to go to Facebook. Record on this computer. As soon as, as, soon as we go live here, I will... So someone can maybe watch the chat board on uh, Facebook for questions. It's on my Facebook. It's just setting up, okay. redirecting. Here we go. Looks like it's, there we are. Okay, we are live. Okay, uh, good morning to uh, people in North America, to Wendy and myself. Uh, good evening to uh, our special guest from Eastern Europe. <laughs> and we also have a visitor from uh, Australia where it is two o'clock in the morning. And as I said earlier, if you want to be an Australian UFO researcher, you have to learn to work in the middle of the night because it's always the middle of the night there when, when we're doing stuff. Uh, good morning. Uh, today is a very special show. Um, there's I work on a number of sort of paranormal or whatever you want to call it, phenomena. And I think that they all indicate how the universe actually works. And um, one of the, the one we have on today, I think is maybe one of the more important ones because it can actually be verified it can actually be shown in a laboratory it's not like ufos where you're sort of waiting for it to show up and then it doesn't show up or whatever so today we're going to do a blindfold reading which has a lot of implications i talk about sort of the implications so we're going to, we've got some guests here and we're going to have uh of course with this subject and with any other subject we're going to have some skeptics so last night i posted my little story about skeptics uh, the skeptic goes to the um, the um, psychiatrist and he says to the psychiatrist, he says, I'm dead. I need help. I'm dead. And the psychiatrist said, no, you're not dead. He said, yeah, I'm dead. No, no, you're not dead. Yeah, I'm dead. And he keeps trying to convince the guy. He can't convince the guy he's alive. And then finally says to the skeptic, he says, so do dead people bleed? And the skeptic says, no. 
And then he gets a, a diabetic kid out and he, he pokes the, the skeptic's finger and the blood comes out and he says, okay, so what do you say now? There's blood coming out of your finger. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. You were right. Dead people do bleed. So <laughs> you're never going to convince a skeptic. So uh, we just go on. And um, eventually the consciousness will rise high enough that people will um, get, get it, get with the program and do the right decision. And we have even uh, uh, Leone from Australia today. She's working now with a new generation of uh, uh, people who are training their kids with school. And uh, this is going to be something I want to do an interview down the road. It's going to be exciting stuff when you see that kind of stuff where it's actually getting into the schools of training consciousness inside the schools, then I think we're making some headway and uh, it's a, it's an eternal world. It's, it's what we do. It's not so much the end result that we're going to convince everybody, but it's what we do with the great gift that we've been given of, of understanding of, of how reality actually works. So I want to guess, introduce my two co uh, producers and uh, people are going to ask questions here. Uh, Leone from Australia and Wendy from Ontario, who's just the east of me in the warmer part of Canada. I'm here in Winnipeg, where it's the coldest major city in the world. And I think it was like uh, 35 below with the wind last night. So oh, anyway, uh, welcome, Wendy, and uh, introduce our guests. You were trained and I think uh, Leone was also trained by our yeah. guests today. No, Le it was um, Rob and I took um, training, I think about three or four years ago, as I recall. Yeah. And um, it's Nikolai Denisov and Marina Kasparova. And they're into a lot more stuff than just that. But we, um, I have to say, when I took the course with them, um, I read and I actually saw the room and everything in real time. And um, they're, they're excellent. Um, and I think when we had the interview with Nico, he explained all the other stuff that they're doing also teleportation astral and stuff so um i will and i think nico was going to be here today but um I, maybe not yet so yeah so i'd like to introduce um nikolai and marina and, and let them explain what what they're doing these days <laughs> <laughs> Ну, мы продолжаем э, обучать людей, которые хотят э, развить способности своего мозга, получать информацию. So we continue to teach people uh, how to see with eyes closed. Uh, so it's special people who likes to improve their brain, uh, who wants to get more information from the entire world. So for everybody who is interested in unusual human abilities. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Can you maybe talk a little bit about how you got into this and sort of explain to people, because we have some people on here who probably have not seen blindfold um, reading or seeing with eyes closed. Explain what the concept is and, and how you got involved in this. Расскажи немного об этом для тех, кто ничего не знает и хочет погрузиться в эту тему. Да. У человека есть пять информационных каналов, по которым он познает мир. Everybody has five informational channels through which we receive all information about this world. Это глаза. So it's eyes. Уши. Ears. Кожа. Skin, sense of touch. Nose. И язык. Там. Благодаря этому мы познаем окружающий нас мир. So thanks for these five senses, we, we are able to get information from this world and research it. Однако очень многие ссылают на то, что у них есть как бы дополнительный канал. Чаще всего его называют интуиция. But sometimes some special people used to say, I have an additional channel. So sometimes I can get much more information. And we used to call this uh, channel intuition. Ну, например, как бы есть некоторая последовательность событий, которая должна привести, так сказать, логическому концу. Ну, например... Um, купил билет в театр, uh, но купил новое платье, заказал машину, следовательно, мы идем в театр. 
So uh, we could face uh, there are some events which follow one other. For example, if you bought a ticket in a theater, if you bought a special dress, if you ordered a car, if you uh, fix a certain time, it means you are going to the theater. Но жена говорит вдруг, ты знаешь, дорогой, не получится нам в театр идти. But suddenly, wife could say, you know, darling, we are not going to the theater today. Как не получится? Мы же купили билет, мы купили платье, мы заказали машину. But you know, husband could react this way. How it's possible? We did everything to prepare this event. We did, no, we, we, we bought it. As I said, we have tickets, dress, and all. Жена тоже знает и про билеты, и про платье, и про машину, но у нее есть еще один канал информации, который она называет интуицией, который противоречит всему этому событийному ряду. But uh, a woman, a wife, has additional channel, which allows her to get a little bit more information. And she, she knows, of course, about these tickets and dress, but she has an extra information, and she allows herself to say, Unfortunately, we are not going to the theater today. Муж приходит с работы, говорит, ну ты просто ведьма. No. Отменили спектакль. And you know, the next day it could happen like husband arrive after work and could say, you a witch probably, you know, the theater show was deleted. Нас интересует этот дополнительный информационный канал, который уточняет информацию из окружающего нас мира. So for us it's interested uh, uh, very much this additional channel which allows us to get a little bit more information and to make correct decisions in this life. Называют его по-разному. So there are a lot of names for it. Intuition. Like intuition. Ясновидение. Clairvoyance. Астральное видение. Astral vision. Эфирное видение. Etheric vision. И так далее. And so on. <laughs> Но Самое важное, этот канал дает нам дополнительную информацию в наш мозг. But the most important part is this additional channel allows us to get special information directly to our brain. И тогда наше поведение, если у нас больше информации, будет более осмысленной в нашей повседневной жизни. And because we have such additional information, our behavior in this life become more correct. Um, вот, собственно, мы и изучаем этот дополнительный информационный канал, шестой информационный канал. So, we, all our life almost, we spend our time researching this additional sixth channel. Мы получаем информацию по этому шестому каналу, и в процессе тренировок мы должны убедиться, что этот канал дает нам правильную информацию. Uh, we use this sixth channel in the very important part is um, to train and to check this sixth channel. Uh, do we receive correct information? Could we trust this channel? Самый простой способ проверки, ну, карты Зенера все знают. Нужно посмотреть на карты Зенера закрытыми глазами, используя шестой канал. Mm -hmm. И сказать треугольник, квадрат или крестик перед тобой. So the easiest way to check this channel is to use, for example, Zener cards. So, you know, you close your eyes, you try to get information through your sixth channel, and then you open your eyes and check if this uh, triangle, square, or so on. Поэтому мы не учим смотреть. Смотреть через закрытые глаза – это бессмысленно. So we don't teach how to see with eyes closed. There is no sense. Мы учим получать информацию по шестому каналу, по новому шестому каналу. We teach how to get additional information through six channel. Через закрытые глаза смотреть невозможно, ничего не видно. So it's impossible to see through closed eyes. Ничего не видно. We could, you could see nothing. Если uh, вы будете снимать энцефалограмму мозга, if you would like to make like EEG researches with scientists, то когда смотрите глазами, у вас работают затылочные доли головного мозга. So for scientists, it's visible when you use your normal eyes, you activate this part of your brain. 
Если у вас закрыты глаза, у вас здесь нет никакого сигнала. So in a moment when you close your eyes, there is absolutely no signal in this area of brain. Поэтому вопрос подглядывают, не подглядывают, возможно, невозможно, проверяется очень легко. Снимите энцефалограмму. Если в затылочной доле есть сигнал, значит участвуют глаза. So there is no question for scientists, is it possible to read with eyes closed or not? If you use EEG and you close your eyes and continue to receive information, but this part of brain doesn't work, any signal, so it means it's possible. So... Мы целый год снимали энцефалограммы в научно-исследовательском институте нейрофизиологии. So we spent one year doing such researches in our famous neuro institute in Moscow. В Москве. И было выяснено, что когда работает шестой канал, то информация обрабатывается не в затылочных долях, а в височных долях головного мозга. And one of conclusion after such researches was that information which we receive through new channel in our brain active not in this area but in these areas. То есть это образуется новый участок головного мозга. So a new brain part appears after such classes as we do. Мы становимся умнее, наша голова приобретает новый участок. So we become smarter, our brain get a new active brain part. То есть, если у нас, у обычных людей работают пять каналов, то у нас, у тех людей, которые тренируют свой мозг, получается шестой канал. So if ordinary people use just five channels to receive information, those people who was trained have an additional channel, so they're more successful in each decision they make in their lives. И этот канал никак не связан с видео. And this channel has no connection with vision directly. Это канал, который дает нам информацию. So this channel gives us information, but we compare this information with the vision channel in order to check it, just to check it in the beginning, especially. Да. Ну, например, представьте себе, что у вас на листочке бумажки нарисована фигурка, состоящая из трех линий которые соединены между собой под углом 60 градусов. So, try to imagine. You have a piece of paper, and there is geometrical shape, which has three lines and three angles 60 degrees. Что это такое? What it is? Ground, please. Triangle, yeah. Yes. Я дал вам только информацию. So I gave you only an information. А ваш мозг интерпретировал эту информацию в картинку треугольника. But your brain, using such information, transformed it in a picture. So the picture. Так что шестой канал – это чистая информация, а мы ее можем интерпретировать в картинку. So you could get information through your sixth channel only like an information, and then your brain makes another part created, for example, in a picture. No, maybe it is a sound. Then we can open our eyes and be convinced that we have done it correctly. And the sixth channel has given us the right information. And you are able to open your eyes, to check it, to see the triangle in front of you, and prove yourself it's real information. Можно эту информацию три линии соединены между собой было трансформировать в звук. But our brain could do something else. After you get this information, like I told you, angles, lines, you could hear an inner voice, which says you, "This is triangle." И многие дети действительно слышат этот внутренний голос и говорят, да, да, я посоветовался с игрушкой, она мне сказала, что это треугольник. And it's common, especially for children, they used to say something like, my toy told me it is triangle. So it's normal for them to hear inner voice. 
Наверное, вы все играли в игру, когда вот так вот монетку зажмешь, кулачок, и спрашиваешь, в какой руке монетка? And probably you played such a game when you put some coin in your hand, then like mix it and ask where is, where is the coin. Мы делаем так серьезно, так, тут холодно, а тут тепло, монетка здесь. So, and we used to do like this, this hand is cold, this hand is warm, so probably coin is here. На самом деле температура тела одинаковая, и здесь, и здесь, 36,6 градусов. Но информация через шестой канал пришла, что коин здесь, и интерпретирует тактильное ощущение. And your additional channel gave you an information that the correct the coin is here, so need to change temperature in order you understand where is the correct answer. То есть другими словами, мы можем и полученную информацию по шестому каналу интерпретировать в любую известную нам канал восприятия. Можем в видео канал, можем слуховой, можем в тактильный, можем в запаховой и через когда от, проверить для проверки правильности работы шестого канала. So as you see, first part is to get information through your sixth channel, and then you, up to you which channel to choose to check this information through vision, through hearing, and other senses also. Probably you have heard uh, such senses like bad deal smells bad. Also, if you dislike it, you could say, I'm not going to be involved in it, I dislike smell. Почему мы тренируем этот шестой канал до уровня видеоканала? Потому что видеоканал – самый мощный канал в нашей жизни. So, what, why did we choose to compare this additional channel with vision? Because the majority of information, like 80% of each information, we receive through our eyes. Поэтому, если шестой канал натренируется до уровня видео канала, мы получим еще 67% дополнительной информации в наш мозг. So, if we are able to train our additional channel, like vision, like we have additional 60, 70, 80% of information we could get. То есть на самом деле это, это, этот навык необходим людям, которые активно работают своей головой. And we think such ability, such skill are very important for those people who used to use their brain in their life. Например, это люди, которые имеют с, с большим массивом поступающей информации. Да. Иногда даже это большой массив информации для бизнесмена которые заключают буквально минутный контракт. Минуту назад уже как бы информация была такая, через минуту она может измениться. И тогда нам нужен вот эта вот ускоренная обработка информации. Uh, we used to work with businessmen uh, who need to make decision very often, almost every minute need to make decision. And they know information you get now, so it's information has time. So if you get information, you need to fix it immediately. So yes, so yes. Uh, one minute later, this information could be old. So for them, very important. Мы, конечно, работаем с людьми, которые исследуют что-то необычное. And we used to work with those people who are interested in something unusual. Потому что наши пять, наши известные пять каналов не всегда отображают, если что-то мы сталкиваемся с чем-то необычным, например, с необычным движением энергетики, которую глазами нельзя видеть. Those people who are interested in something unusual, they used to understand that often, very often, our five channels doesn't allow us to catch correct information from the world. For example, some energetical movement. 
глазами мы не можем видеть, а вот этот шестой канал позволяет нам видеть течение энергетики в пространстве. And as we know, our eyes doesn't allow us to see this energetic movement, but additional channel help us. Да. Мы глазами можем видеть только то, что мы когда-нибудь видели. Uh, our eyes allows us to see something we saw before. So we are compare new information with something we saw before. То есть у нас есть некоторая библиотека информации в затылочных долях головного мозга, и мы сравниваем новую информацию с тем, что уже записано там. So we have certain library of images in our brain, and each new information we compare with images we already have in our library. А представьте себе, мы сталкиваемся с чем-то необычным, и в библиотеке нету ни такой информации. And if to imagine we face with something unusual, like there is no image in our library, we feel like confusion, but no image at all, only feeling. Maybe something something happened, but what it is? Для например, например, я могу рассказать о случае, который произошел со мной. Николай has his own example. Я закончил институт, начал работать в министерстве, и меня попросили встретить вьетнамскую делегацию. So when Nikolai just graduated after university, he uh, worked in a ministry of foreign um, connection, and his boss told him, "Please go to the railway station to meet a Japanese professor, uh, Vietnamese." Sorry. Дали мне портрет. Я стою и жду на пероне. So he had a portrait, and he was ready to meet a known person. Подходит поезд, выходит огромное количество вьетнамцев. И все как один похожи на мой профессор. And you understand when a train arrived, and all of them appear, so each of them for Nikolai looked the same way like his professor on the picture. У меня в моей библиотеке нет черт азиатского лица. So in that moment in his library of images, he has not any. Характеристик of Asian faces. Any, it was so. Они все для меня так кружочек и глаза. So and it was impossible to recognize correct person. Да. Самое интересное было на следующий день, когда я вез их на переговоры. Руководитель попросил сесть рядом с ним. And the next day, when Nikolai bring those delegation to the negotiation. The chief of Vietnamese delegation asked, "Please sit with us." I said, "No, обычно мы сидим с одной стороны, вы с другой стороны." And he said, "But you know the rules should be like your part of delegation in one part of the table. We should sit on the opposite part." Like, oh, great! I know, but we will not recognize you. And he says, "I know, but we couldn't recognize you. <laughs> so for, for us, you look similarly." То есть у него нет черт европейского лица в его библиотеке, и он затрудняется с, с, с нашим распознаванием. So uh, the same situation was repeated. He also had no any images of European faces in his library of images. А теперь представьте, мы встречаем инопланетянина, а у нас нету никаких записей об инопланетянине. And you could imagine the situation if we met alien. We couldn't recognize him because we have no any images this way. А вот этот канал, да, сам информацию, да, здесь есть объект, да, он выглядит ни на что не похожий, но объект существует. But this part of brain allows us to recognize. First of all, there is somebody, and it's possible to recognize few details. For example, sun, frost, first impression. Да. То есть этот канал дает очень много преимуществ даже в обычной практике. Допустим, консилиум врачей у всех анализы три врача смотрят на эти анализы и говорят, ну нет, кризис не миновал. А третий доктор говорит, нет, миновал. You could imagine other situation like three doctors 
see three analyses of one person and two of them who have one opinion and one of them says crisis uh, gone everything is okay да они говорят где где написано про это мы же смотрим одинаковые анализы где ты прочел and two other doctors could say how do you know we see the same analysis how do you know that everything is okay already just intuition mm. like <laughs> Опыт мне подсказывает. Дополнительная информация нужна всем. So everybody needs such additional information. Докторам, For doctors, художникам, artists, ученым, бизнесменам. Businessmen. Как бы дополнительная информация всегда более правильное решение в повседневной жизни. So additional information allows us to make correct decision in our life. Mm -hmm. well, shortly about what are we doing? <laughs> can can you describe the the process that you take people through and how long does it take? And do you do it on the internet or talk a little bit about the work that you do for people? Oh, of course, we prefer to travel, like you know. And uh, I remember a time when we visited Australia, America, and Europe, and. Have never, have never been in Canada yet, went it's really, really hard. <laughs> so COVID stopped all of that, so. Uh, a, a little bit easier to work with people who are sitting together, not yeah. by internet. Yeah. Because it, sometimes it's necessary just to change your body position and a vision um, will be a little bit easier, better. Less, longer to describe easier to do but actually of course uh, i remember um, i don't know maybe 15 years when skype uh, just appeared yeah, so yeah. 15, 20 years ago we started to train people by skype of course it's also possible our first uh, uh, results adults are able to get after five days of training wow. five days two hours per day hard work a lot of focusing on of information, but um, to see first shape, first letter, first number with eyes closed is possible after just five weeks. Of course, um, if you want to, to fix a result, to do it bigger, better, longer, uh, we prefer to do one month training. And then we have like personal connection with each, with each student to create the best schedule for them. Это обосновывается тем, что по данным нейрофизиологов устойчивые нейронные связи формируются в течение 20, по крайней мере, 21 дня. Uh, we choose this schedule because as a neuroscientist says, to fix new neuro connection in our brain, to create a new habit, to fix new neuro connection, we need at least 21 day. Okay. So, ну, this is the way our brain works. Yeah. Да. Потому что то, что за пять дней получилось, <laughs> через пять дней исчезнет. Ну, no, as you understand, you are able to get first result during, ну, after five days of training. But if you stop your training, ну, it will disappear during next five days. <laughs> In in America, there's a lot of skepticism. You mentioned uh, working with a, an institute in Moscow, a neurological institute. Is is the is there an attitude? Are they investigating this stuff scientifically in 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 Russia, or is it is still a private thing like people that you are doing? Uh, it was not easy to start such researches even in Moscow, and uh, of course, scientists people everywhere are too skeptical and we are glad that we started it with our friend and when we get uh, serious results we are able to discuss and to see the president of our um, medical academy to show them result uh, to prove because it's real mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, uh, we are ready to repeat, to do it better with, in, in any country with those people who are interested to research more. Because again, we have, everybody has brain, but actually we use three, five, four percent of it. Yeah. So if we are able to get new result and to fix it with those machines, with those devices we already have, 
I think it's necessary to do. But the best way if to dream about future, we need not, we need not scientists. Uh, we need physics who are able who, to create a new paradigm, da? a new paradigm of yeah. the world, then to make a formula, then engineers could create a special devices and then each scientist will be happy to do researches using these new machines. Because, you know, even EEG, it's not directly what happens in the brain, you know. Mm, no. And tomogramma, it's like side effect, not directly what happens in the brain. But uh, it's interesting topic to prove, to research, maybe yeah. to find a way uh, to learn a student faster, also important part. Um, дело вот в чем. А, когда президент Академии медицинских наук Покровский собрал а, совещание Академии медицинских наук, uh -huh. а, был, а, что, ну, давай, давай, давай. Да, был задан вопрос мне. А, вот энергетическое взаимодействие с человеком, которое как бы используется в том числе при обучении вот этому видению, а оно носит электромагнитный характер или нет? So when we uh, had this time and we show um, our results of researches in this Ministry of Medicine Academy, so one person asked, uh, so uh, you use energy, you use your own energy during uh, the way you study, you teach people. Is this energy influence has electromagnetic waves? Я говорю, нет. Николай said, no, there is no electromagnetic signals. It is another type of energy. Потому что электромагнитный сигнал экранируется обычной металлической сеткой. Ну, сеткой по фольгой. Because electromagnetic signal could be destroyed by a metal shield, any metal shield. А даже если мы обернем голову фольгой, and even uh, if we will use a foil this way around our head, мы все равно сможем видеть uh, то, что находится вокруг нас. So we are still able to receive information and to see images uh, around us. Тогда... <laughs> Один из участников этого uh, большого собрания сказал, Николай Николаевич, тогда вы для нас просто не существуете, потому что у нас на вооружении только электромагнитные приборы. And then one scientist uh, said, uh, Mr. Denisov, because of what you said, unfortunately, you didn't exist for us. You don't exist for us. So why? Why would happen? Because we use only electromagnetic devices to measure. To measure. Mm -hmm. А ученый начинает свои исследования с измерения. And you know, each scientist start their researches from the beginning measure. They used to measure everything. А если у нас нет приборов, которые мы вас можем померить? Вы для нас не существуете. And because we have no devices we are able to use to measure you, so you don't exist for us. Поэтому ваш путь, ваш путь к физикам, so your way to physics, so, которые создадут новую теорию поля. So they need to create a new theory of field of the field. Не электромагнитную. Not electromagnetic. Тогда инженеры yeah, сделают yeah. прибор. А мы с удовольствием будем вас мерить. And after that, with new devices, we will be happy to measure everything you are able to do. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe uh, you know somebody uh, younger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just going to bring up the, uh, have you been contacted by the Ion Institute? It was started by the Apollo astronaut Edgar Mitchell to study consciousness. They've been working on it since the 1970s. In fact, I think they, when the when the Russians were working on uh, what we call remote viewing, that's what started the Americans. The Americans realized, oh, the Russians are working on this. So they started to look at it and Edgar Mitchell got the funding for them. 
Have you been contacted by the Ions Institute? Because they have an understanding of things that are beyond electromagnetic field and stuff. And what would you be able to demonstrate for them in terms of uh, uh, seeing? Because the other thing they would want is the reproducibility. Can can you produce this phenomena all the time? So have you been contacted by them? Because Wendy, I think, has had interactions with them. And they they would be an interesting. I don't know if you've been contacted by them. So Edgar Mitchell visited uh, Moscow, I think, in the 90s, in the late of 90s. Yep. And actually, Nikolai was there. We have a picture with him. Wow. <laughs> but uh, maybe it's need to refresh such contacts. Uh, because, you yeah. know, it was almost yeah, 25 years. If there is an analogous research in но они тоже, так сказать, тогда были в, 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 начале, в зачаточном, с начальных пути. So, almost like 25 years ago, Nikolai asked, do you have same researchers in USA? And he said, of course we have. But again, 25 years ago, it was almost the same level, like in Russia. So, it was no so many information to share. Maybe now it could be another, another way. When you jump in... Wendy, maybe you can jump in on this because you were contacted by um, IONS Institute by Dean Radin. Uh, do you think we could work on maybe something to try to get? Um, uh, yeah, I can. I can contact him. I contacted him just recently about um, Sebastian, who remote views and stuff. And so I, I can contact him and uh, and see if he's interested for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting to see um, th them go to the IONS Institute in California and spend a week there and let them demonstrate uh, because I think that's what they're looking at. They understand the principle that there are these things. Dean's written a, a number of books on it. He understands the principle, uh, but they're looking for uh, subjects and experiments and stuff like that. I think we should work on something like that and try to get them brought over to America to, to uh, work with the IONS Institute. Mm -hmm. Uh, есть идея по институту в Калифорнии тоже рассказать, попробовать поисследовать. В общем, да, это, это такая программа небольшая. Ну, мы готовы всегда сотрудничать с учеными, потому что ну, наши исследования сейчас в России практически... Не, 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 не. Ну, потому что как бы, мы все, что могли сделать здесь, мы сделали. Uh, of course, we are open for any contact for new researchers, especially with people who interested, really interested in, in human ability. It's, it's our life, actually, to teach people, to research, to find something new in this world. Да, потому что мы действительно ищем что-то новое, и у этого видения есть очень интересное продолжение, когда вот это прямое видение может перейти как мы. And this vision with eyes closed it's only first step uh, and actually each hour new practice have a base uh, like vision vision with eyes closed but actually a remote vision much more interesting than direct vision our practice with energy actually healing uh, teleportation and when we see we used to travel and to meet uh, great masters grand masters in other countries who used to work with energies it also help us to get uh, knowledges from then using additional channel no need to spend 40 years in china like it's traditional traditional way to get new abilities just few days, few weeks, and we, can, we are able to continue to train ourselves in a new energetic way. So it's really interesting. Wow. You, you mentioned teleportation. I, I know that the Chinese, they're, they were discussed that Chinese children are working on this. What, what kind of abilities have people got in terms of teleportation? And do you have a levitation as well? Because we heard about this as well, the levitation thing. Расскажу, как бы, расскажите про детей, про, про телепортацию немножечко и занимайтесь ли вы левитацией. Mm. Ну, если разговор зашел про детей, то дети очень легко обучаются вообще всем новым э, навыкам. If you ask about children, the main answer is children used to learn everything faster than adults. It doesn't matter vision or teleportation. It's very easy. 
Если для взрослого требуется 21 день, то для ребенка требуется 15 минут для того, чтобы научиться видеть. And if to compare adults and children, if uh, adult need 21 day to fix the result, actually for child it's enough 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Мы снимали фильм э, в Австралии, э, да. о, 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 рассказы о людях с необычными возможностями. Ага. И режиссер просто пригласил детей сотрудников и сказал, а вот попробуйте, покажите на, на, на примере детей. Ага. И буквально через 15 минут они начали видеть э, мячики, там, ага. эти грибочки. Uh, actually, in Australia, we were with a special uh, target. We were invited uh, to be filmed in a movie about people with unusual abilities. And in one moment, director of the movie, uh, do you remember this movie, The Secret? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep, yep. so the same director, uh, okay, who created, who created a new uh, part. And uh, in one moment, he asked, is it possible to add like, you no know, child, children, children's energy in our movie? Uh, could you teach them? Of course, we said, just, just find the children for us. Wow. <laughs> and just children of their you know, footage team, like, you know, of this, they bring their children. And it was so easy. So yeah. we never saw them before. It's time to record uh, our class. We just uh, really 15 minutes and they started to see some simple objects like an apple, some toys, right. Re really pleasure to work with children. Mm -hmm. We prefer to work with adults because uh, the idea is to research more. So yeah. with adults it's uh, easier to discuss uh, this uh, interesting theme. And of course our students is our colleagues. No. Who, <coughs> Дети, у детей мозг все время чему-то обучается. Children use to learn everything each minute. Each minute. Кататься на велосипеде, залезать на дерево, купаться, плавать. То есть они все время учатся, поэтому для них научиться видеть с закрытыми глазами – это одно из многих умений. Uh, because children use to learn something new each moment, like to ride bicycle, Uh, to swim, new language, like, you know, a lot of things. For them, it's so natural to start to learn something new, so no obstacles at all. И у детей другая физиология мозга. And also children have another physiology of brain. У взрослого человека мозг разделен на определенные кластеры, которые отвечают за определенные умения. As you know, uh, adult's brain has certain parts which are responsible for uh, certain activities. И создать новый кластер для взрослого человека это очень сложно. And to create a new cluster, especially for vision, actually it's hard enough. А у детей нет еще этих кластеров, у них участвует весь мозг в освоении нового знания. But children has no such clusters, all their brain involved in the learning process. Поэтому чисто физиологически детей обучать легче, чем взрослых. So even uh, physiologically it's easier to teach children and psychologically also. И психологически, физиологически. They don't afraid to make mistakes. They don't punish themselves. I'm not like other people. I did five mistakes already. It's horrible. Но нам интересно обучать взрослых, потому что это люди сознательно хотят увеличить информационный поток, который им нужен в жизни. То есть это сознательное обучение. And adults has the consciousness uh, and conscious intent to use it in their life, to make their life more successful, more, more interesting, more useful for others. So as a part of intent. <laughs> so for adults, it's really important. Поэтому для меня интересно работать с этими людьми, для которых, которые будут использовать это в повседневной жизни. So I prefer to work with adults uh, who are going to use it every day. Да. То есть это реальная помощь. So it's really help for them to have such ability. Yeah. 
we did have uh, Leone's uh, grandson. Uh, we had a couple of interviews we did with him and he was driving a car and he um, actually was doing a demonstration on, on camera. And he was, I think, 13 at the time. And then I challenge, challenged uh, Leone that we should have a, some Olympic teams for kids and they have the little thing where they, they like to play games. They run through and the, the different colors and they're doing stuff. And uh, thanks to Leone, she actually had uh, uniforms for them. But unfortunately, we didn't get any other teams. The Canadians didn't come up with a team and the Americans. And so if we do come up with a team, you can train the Russian team and we'll have the, the, the Australians are ready to go. We just got to convince the, there's a group of uh, uh, martial arts teachers in Utah, in the United States, who also train uh, in this this art. So uh, we can maybe convince them. But uh, it, 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 the children, as you point out, are much easier to uh, to train because, the, the you know, the brain is is more open. It's not this little voice talking all the time. Any questions, Leone and uh, Wendy? Let's Let's open it up to you because I've done all the talking here. <laughs> well, um, I do know that, and I think you mentioned it before, I do know that um, Nikolai does do teleportation, if he could elaborate more about that. I've had so many people contact me wanting your contact to be taught teleportation, but I can't imagine that being able to be done over the internet <laughs> on Skype or whatever. Хочется немножко коснуться телепортации, потому что очень привлекательно. И даже Венди коннектит, дай контакт, и он говорит, ну я как бы придерживаюсь, потому что я не уверена, можно ли учить через интернет. Самое время сказать, что сейчас не набираем прямо сейчас. Ника. Телепортация которая, так сказать, модель работы с энергетикой, которая обеспечивает изгиб пространства, что и обеспечивает телепортацию. Так, 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 есть, так, так, давай, так, давай, не так. все подряд. Да, Они да. уже устали, поэтому чуть-чуть. Да. Можно ли учить через интернет телепортацию? Значит, по интернету учить возможно. So, it's possible to teach people to do teleportation by internet. Но... Если видение – это информационная практика, и она не требует большого количества энергии. Uh, I want to divide a vision with eyes closed. It is informational practice. And so we don't use, we don't need to use a lot of energy to develop uh, vision. А телепортация – это энергетическая практика. То есть там нужно очень мощную энергетику. But teleportation is energetical practice, so uh, a person needs to have certain preparation and certain skills already to work with energy, and a lot of energy, maybe gifted even uh, amount of energy. Кроме того, человек должен уметь этой энергетикой пользоваться, то есть он должен собрать ее со всего тела в определенном месте. And uh, if a person wants to do teleportation, he should be able not just have great amount of energy, but also to be able to work with it. For example, uh, to connect all energy in a one place in his body. А потом заставить эту эту энергетику с очень большой скоростью um, выйти в пространство через верхнюю чакру. And then another level is also important to send this amount of energy with a very high speed through the top of the head. Сахасрара. Ну, you know, this chakra Сахасрара. Почему через верхнюю чакру? Мне нужно, чтобы эта вся энергетика имела очень высокую частоту или яркую светимость. Как and сахар. this energy needs to have highest frequency and uh, high light. So a lot of conditions before to start to explain what to do. And of course, for us, it's easier to explain it to work with those people who already know how to see with eyes closed. They're able to see with eyes closed. So they're able to see the energy, not to imagine, really see, and all these details, quantity, quality, speed, and so on, frequency. Then. Uh, it's better to have energetic classes before. And uh, during energetic classes, we do a lot of exercises in a pairs. So you Wait. have immediate feedback from other person. Yeah. Uh, for example, did you say, uh, did you push your energy or pull like immediately? 
and then logically uh, correct time to, to practice uh, teleportation. Когда нас пригласили как в Германию провести класс по телепортации, я сказал, это должны люди, которые умеют работать со собственной энергетикой. So when we were invited in Germany to do this teleportation class, so we told uh, it's necessary to gather a group of students uh, who already practice with energy during a few years. Они говорят, да, 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 они все великолепные энергетики. Я говорю, все равно мне нужна неделя сначала заниматься энергетикой, и только потом я буду им преподавать телепортацию. And of course, an organizer said, of course, yes, yes, our students are very experienced, so just right. And even with prepared students, we had one week for energy class to, 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 to teach them a certain way. And only after that, we started to practice uh, teleportation. Yeah. Yeah. Упражнения достаточно сложные, и я предпочитаю это делать, ну, как бы в, в, в непосредственном контакте. Uh, and of course, it's not easiest practice. It's already for prepared students. And of course, Nikolai prefer to work with teleportation group face by face. And it, it, of course, it's not about one month teaching. More or less stable result after one year. Oh, wow. And after that, it's possible to think about something bigger. Would it be the same as levitation? Same kind of energy work? Такая же работа с левитацией. Я не занимался практикой левитации. I didn't work with levitation. Поэтому не могу сказать, такая или не такая. I couldn't compare. Is it the same way or, or not? Okay. На свете очень много необычных практик. But as you know, there are a lot of practices in the world. <laughs> Например, yeah. когда мы эм, приехали на Бали обучаться мастера телепортации, он нам поставил условие, что если мы зажгем чучело, которое mm -hmm. стоит в пальмовых листьях в 30 метрах, тогда он будет с нами заниматься телепортацией. And even when we arrived to, to Indonesia uh, to learn from a great master teleportation, he told us, I will teach you teleportation after you will be able to show me uh, how you do pyrokinesis. So like an example for us was uh, to use pyrokinesis, which we never did before also. But you know, you know, visa has a certain time. It was necessary for us to get first result before we go there. But то есть он он не не он демонстрирует удивительные возможности. Он зажигает чучело на тридцать, которое стоит в тридцати метрах от него своей энергетикой. Но но мне не нужна эта практика в моей повседневной жизни. And as you understand, our interest was in teleportation. Actually, it looks amazing when master do like this, and this uh, uh, like a toy from leaves uh, become burn. It's really impressive. And this toy, like in 30 meter distance, it's impressive. But actually, for us, it's like you no. Know, it's better to be focused on something directly. So if we're interested in teleportation, only teleportation is important. But for him, it was easier for us to show energy movement using another exercise. So it was it was his way to show us how to work with energy. So we did it. Практика очень эффектная. Зажечь где-нибудь в ресторане свечи на столе, и все будут хлопать. Но она для меня бесполезная. Ну, it's impressive, it's nice to sit in the restaurant to make like this long candles, like you know, burn. But actually, it's not my interest. Uh, I'm not a showman. <laughs> my idea is to research and to teach. Поэтому левитация, ну, хорошая практика, как и зажигание этого. Но она для меня не представляет интереса, потому что, ну, подняться над землей, ну, немножко пролететь. Ну, как бы, вот для меня практического применения в жизни я не вижу этим, как 
практика. And uh, for us, like levitation, like uh, pyrokinesis, like telekinesis, a little bit simply than teleportation. And to Not use simply. our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are all good. Not simply, they are good. The internet, but не используется. Не используется. But I don't know how to use it in my life and how it helps me to get results in teleportation. Mm -hmm. But а this is a good, good а example. Of how to use Мы вот сейчас с вами говорим по, ну, на большом расстоянии, а если бы э, я освоил практику перемещения, мы могли все сидеть за столом. Э, California. <laughs> and, and you know, human body teleportation, it's a topic we are focused, especially we have some spontaneous result, but not like, you know, conscious result yet. But could you imagine we could sit in the same place, not in our <laughs> country, for example, in Wendy's home or in Nikos. Do you recognize Nikos? <laughs> yeah, Nikos just joined us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I look uh, younger today. <laughs> if we would have an American team, Nico would be the captain. Yeah. <laughs> if you jump, jump in, Nico, and make a comment or ask a question. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so oh, I'd like to share uh, something very amazing. So um, we're at a, a ranch right now, and we had a knock on the door, and one of the horses uh, fell out really bad, and it was uh, his eyes was turning gray, and it was um, blinking slowly for about 20 minutes, and the host knocked on the door. And um, I, was, uh, I was on a phone call with this lady and we were talking about resurrection power. And then I get a knock on the door. So I go out there and um, I said, don't worry, because they were crying with her and her husband. I said, don't worry, watch this. So I put my hands on a horse for about uh, 10 seconds and the horse popped up so fast and came to me. It was, uh, uh, I'm not the owner, but you know, it was uh, giving me gratitude and it knows uh, what happened. And it was beautiful. The lady's giving me a, a testimony today of what happened yesterday. <clears throat> But is the teleportation of love? <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing! Oh my gosh, that's what I'd love to be able to do. <laughs> I've, had, I've had a couple of the experiences talking, well, having animals talk to me, and it was the most amazing thing ever to right. just turn, look at you, and ah, uh, it's just amazing. Mm. It is. It is definitely. We're we're all glad we're here. We're on a big movement. Uh, Wendy, Nikolai, Marina, uh, as uh, we all been um we were we crossed path <laughs> in a mutual <laughs> way and um yeah we're bringing a great project here and uh a grant um hosting what he's hosting here and and being interested in all this stuff since um for a long time we're on a great journey and a great mission and here we go the platform starting now <laughs> there you go yeah. yeah talk a little bit about your platform because they may have some new people you're, you're starting a new platform that will demonstrate and teach and That's this right. kind of stuff yeah, so uh, we're adding uh, Nikolai Marina on there as well. Um, we just had a, another good friend of ours uh, join in. Um, and it, it's a guy, I don't know if you, Nikolai Marina, if you heard of him before. His name's Michael Grubb from Evolved Ministry. And um, he's really big on the aerokinesis and hydrokinesis. And he's actually uh, one of the best that is known in public or online. Um, he was in four different branches of the military, but that stuff's going great. I also got a great call um, yesterday of some property in Mosquito, Honduras, right where the uh, Mayan pyramids are. And we have access to it, uh, property, cave, waterfall. And we're planning on building like a Hogwarts Harry Potter school. So we got the paperwork and a lot of stuff going through. Wow. Things moving fast. And um, excited to go out there with our magic wands. <laughs> wow. So amazing. Uh -huh. So. Oh, that's what I'm setting up here, a Hogwarts school. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell, oh, talk yes. a little bit about your school or what you're doing there, what you're planning. Uh, well, I've been doing the home-based um, schooling with the children and mainly working with um, autistic kids and watching their magic. I mean, they're teaching me more than I'm teaching them. And and I, I've always felt that I'm just reminding them of what they've already had present. And just just um, enabling them to recognise their own information that they've always had, and it's all evidence based um, gaming that we do here. So any any sort of telekinesis or remote viewing through gameplay, uh, teaching them to trust their own messages 
That's all it's about. And that's what I say to people when they bring their kids in uh, to, for me to teach, that it's not necessarily about just seeing through the blindfold. It's about developing that in intuition. And then I get family groups and they start connecting as a collective consciousness. And my own family group forever has done the intuitive side uh, has been amplified anyway. We will connect with each other if we get a sense of something and we will connect, connect with each other and say, do you feel it? Do you feel it? What do you think it is? And we trust each other's um, uh, information as to like whether we should get in the car and go anywhere that day because we can feel something and we all feel it together. And the kids are doing that now that I'm teaching. And I've just had a lady uh, contact me that's setting up a school. She, she's um, ex-circus. She's a circus performer and she's still doing it 54. She's amazing. And she was bringing in kids to do aerial silks and uh, acrobatics and juggling and other things. And she decided to, um, she was a, she had an awakening experience and she, she decided to um, step forward and bring new modalities into her school. So she's just recently decided to set up a school with um, consciousness uh, teachings across the board, like expressive dance, intuitive painting, meditation. Um, she's brought me in. So this and, and survival skills, all sorts of modalities that heighten awareness, basically. So I'm really excited to start that next week only. It's just sort of on the ground level and there's only a few students. But um, I've been feeling this coming for about five or six years. I've been feeling it coming and I know that it's going to grow. So um, evidentially it'll be obvious because the more kids you train, the more kids will, will develop this skill set and it'll just ripple effect. It'll just start affecting the people around them and it's like it'll be acknowledged without knowing it's being acknowledged because it'll start to become normal. normal. Yeah, and like instead of the kids not wanting to tell their friends, it'll turn into them bringing all their friends. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a bit of stigma around that and they um, have been bullied in the past about what they're doing. So most of the parents... <laughs> don't want me to tell anybody that they're doing this because they don't want to be, you know, uh, they don't want to be, well, the kids don't want to be accused of lying. So yeah. it's it's been a little bit difficult, but I hope with this new school um, and the more kids come into the fold, it's going to become right. more normal. Yeah. yeah, and it won't be such a big deal. And, and it'll develop from there. It's going to go a lot further. I can feel it. I'm really excited about it. Awesome. N Nico had a good idea of uh, sort of calling it a Harry Potter school because the kids would then would see it like a, the movie and this this kind of stuff. It's it's uh, it's an interesting concept. Where um, I think we've got we've got already Australia and and uh, Russia and Nico in, in America and Central America and Wendy, you're doing some training as well. You're training a blind woman as well. Yes, correct? she's she's, um, um, she's lost one eye and she's got cataracts in her other eye. And um, she came to me to see if I could help her. And um, I've only done two or three sessions with her, but she's already seeing, yeah, already seeing images, seeing pictures, seeing that. So I'm going to continue on with that. So yeah, very cool. And she's a, she's in her 60s. So and she's doing really well. So yeah, and I hope I hope to do more, but I want to expand myself also. So. Wow. So and and Rob Freeman is also doing training in your area. You're, you're in Ontario, Canada, correct? Yes, uh, Rob. I think he is training an absolutely blind man. He just came to him. I think he's only done two sessions with him. He's been totally blind since he was 10 years old. And um, and then he's also been training Claudia, who is slowly losing her sight. I think he's been training her for about a year, year and a half now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Wow. Is there a, is there a website? Can everybody sort of spell out their their websites? Or is there a place where we can link all these websites in one place where people can make contact to the people that are here today. Um, yeah, we could probably put it in the, in the comments or whatever. And yeah. sure. 
Yeah. yeah. Because you have uh, uh, Nicola and you have you have a, um, a website and you have you have videos there that d demonstrate what's the name of your website for people that might want to try, try to contact you or is that the best way to contact you? We sent you a, a link with our website. Okay. Okay. And I think isn't Nico helping you set up? I think he was telling me he's. Are you still helping helping them set up a new website? Yep. Or We're, um, we haven't uh, got on theirs yet, but uh, we are. We have a um, a lot of detailed plans and we're going over uh, slideshows and putting a lot of stuff together uh with the event and then once we get organized with that we're bringing that together so just like grant was saying as well about a one-stop shop is what we're working to build with each other so we're equal among the equal and everyone can have access to everybody on a giant search engine that goes uh out there and bringing the right people in and what we're working and what we're doing are you encouraged with what's going on i mean i, I can ask everybody do you do you see that we're actually making some headway now as compared to the past? I think I <laughs> in my case, it's becoming more accessible, even though um, <laughs> I told a girlfriend of mine who isn't, isn't into this, th this stuff. And I told her one of her experiences and one of my experiences. And she told me I was just weird, but I think <laughs> the more we talk about it, the more it'll get out there. So. And, and make it more visible on our websites and and um, and just, just keep talking about it. And I think training people and getting them talking to their friends and getting them to see and getting them to experience um, more intuition, not only just the seeing, but uh, more intuition and and um, and feeling more um, confident with themselves. That's what I'm finding that's happening with some of the people I deal with. So, yeah, but I think I think the world, the, the, it, the word just has to get out there and people accept it. Perhaps yes. we can maybe do a video where people have little clips because people like to look at the little clips of demos and put them all in one and and dem demonstrate that because I've got fairly large number of people but mm -hmm. uh, there a lot of you know what the, the the internet is like now I think they said the the attention span is like seventeen seconds yeah. per story yeah. that people are are flipping through and they they like to the videos and but they like the little short clips so maybe we can do something like that where we I, sort of highlight this. I actually, um, Deb Shockey helped me with this and she said, you need to get on TikTok. That's where all the young people are. Oh yeah, that's right. And so- Does she, does she do that? Yeah, she's on there. Yeah, she's are, on there. Are you on TikTok, Nico? Nico? Uh, I haven't used it much, but I am. And uh, it blows up very fast. You can, yeah. you know, you know how it is. A lot of people are using it and uh, they're interested in this stuff. There's so much, there's, I believe at the top of billions of views for people typing in metaphysics um, or what wow. they'll type in for magic or superpower ability, supernatural, um, those type of words. And it's it's the highest in the search engine and yeah. TikTok's really banging it out. Do you, do you get TikTok in, in Russia? Do you, are you have access to that site? Uh, we have TikTok, but we don't, uh, don't do it. Actually, mm, I think Nico will help us to invite new <laughs> students. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah tiktok is big with the kids i mean it's it's sort of like demo yeah. it's almost like the you know if you get uh you know the leone's juggler there you know that, that's the kind of stuff that people they just go crazy and it they share it all and uh but you need the young people because that's old people it's, it's like you pointed out with the with the uh the seeing is that it for an older person you have to change that mindset where it's it's easier just to keep doing what you've always done but you know, I see our real students who who is looking for us, even if they find Wendy before and then us, I think they don't spend a lot of time in the internet. They no. used to read books. Oh, oh is that right? Real deals, yeah. Because I think now internet and TikTok are more for entertainment, for yeah. relax, for pleasure. But I think our people a little bit different already. Yeah. And they they're looking for something additional. No, wow. we'll see. Yeah. And, um, are you encouraged uh, in terms of uh, what's going on? Are you encouraged that in terms of you've done it for many, many decades? I mean, is it is it picking up? Is it are we are we winning or losing the battle? Are we losing what? Are we winning or losing the battle? Like you're trying to get this message out. Are, are, is it better than it was 20 years ago? Uh, it was different. <laughs> I couldn't say it was better than worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that's what we're hoping for is that the consciousness rises where 
people understand that they have these abilities because in school they're not taught this they're taught that you only have the five senses that's it everything else is woo woo it's nonsense what is interesting about uh, education now almost everywhere now people use the same books people use uh, watch the same movies like you know they visit the same courses so in the majority they have the same type of brain so for those who a little bit see in the future and want to have some benefits in the future, of course, they are looking for something really special. Yeah. And I think it's not really for everybody. Not each profession needs high working brain. Maybe it's not necessary at all. But those people who feel their power, their wishes, their intent to change this world, really, yeah. they could find us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nico? <laughs> Absolutely. She's, uh, she's totally right. Like the, the spot that she's speaking about the books, because a lot of the older books, they have a lot of ancient wisdom in them. And nowadays, there's a lot of filters over the books and a lot of uh, mainstream information with people puppet stuff with their primary consciousness. They're not really expanding their consciousness to a uh, secondary where they're more creative, where they're more open and there's less limits. So... Uh, the, how the time is different now and how we're using this technology and information with apps. There's more people that get on apps now than there is surfing the web. And uh, those people that Marina just mentioned that are surfing the web just merely for entertainment. Let's say if we do give an example of a, a video blows up on TikTok with 3 million views, you're going to have less people reach out compared to a video on YouTube that has only 2,000 views. You have more people reaching out on YouTube than you would on TikTok because the way the algorithm set on these platforms where they have a purpose or a state of entertainment only or where they're coming from or where they're looking for. So mm -hmm. as we know, human potential are uh, side effects of our identity. It's who we are. And um, there's people that are just strictly seeking power or people that are really living in love and people that are also uh, studying consciousness with metaphysics and seeing how these abilities can tap into deeper studies of human potential, the evolution of the planet and et cetera. Right. Wow. That, fascinating. It's a fascinating conversation. Is, is, has anybody got more questions? Joan, I see Joan is here. If she's got a question from the, from the group, um, I, I'm I'm interested in doing whatever we can to get the links and get that stuff. And I I realize what you're saying about Facebook. I when you mentioned that we did I did one with an, a medical intuitive who's considered by uh, a high level intelligence guy to be 95 to 100 percent accurate. And she described to me that she was just overwhelmed with uh, people contacting her after my interview with her where she was pretty accurate in what she was saying. And, and so I didn't realize that there, there was that kind of stuff, but it does make sense that, that there would be different algorithms and you, you got to figure that out. And that's, that's where the young people come in. Cause they're, I call them the young guns. They're like the, 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 the people who are uh, open to new ideas and they know how a computer works and they know how, what people are looking at and stuff like that. And they're, they're able to bring these new ideas out quite quickly and, and understand and not get intimidated by apps and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I have a question for Leone. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I enjoy a picture on your wall. Could you tell us a couple of words who painted your pictures and what it is? Uh, Christine Dennett. Um, she does uh, intuitive meditation readings for people and she puts it into picture form the uh images that she receives and the messages that she receives and she put she did this at, because our whole family had individual readings with her so she she did this for us as a family this oh. wow and it's all to do with the energetics of our family connected with um australia uh -huh. and our journey that we're having together so, yeah, they're quite beautiful, aren't they? A really interesting stage fixed in these pictures. Really interesting. Yeah? Because we saw a lot of tries to fix energy, but on your picture, very close to the way we see. So really great work. Okay. I will show you a little bit.
the, our artists, like you see. Wow. Also, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. So it's it's difficult to describe what we see and then to paint it with those who are successful, really valuable person for us. Because sometimes it's easier just to show, make your energy like this. Easier to show a picture than to describe what needs to change. So, so who is the artist that did those ones on your wall, Marina? Uh, no, it's not our student. It's a um, talented man who, because of accident, started to see energy. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you hear that quite often when you get a trauma thing where people can see or they can see fractals yeah, or yeah, mathematics. Yeah, it happens. And a lot of people already burn with certain abilities. So there are like, you know, two common way to be burned or after accident, we prefer to teach people. Maybe it's not <laughs> so fast, but, you know, without damage. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Fascinating. Right. You, you teach people how to be a dry book to burn or how to be flammable. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, I guess we'll leave it at that. If nobody has any more questions, we'll uh, just try to make sure these links get there so that people can find uh, all the different countries and uh, follow up on this because it's, uh, I, I say it's very, very important. Maybe one more question, and this has to do with, uh, I'm very much into um, the whole UFO thing and the the experiencers there, and what they are sort of reporting is it matches. It's like the idea that the the uh, the paranormal is not uh, uh, you know extraordinary. It's just beyond what we actually know. One of the things is the 360 degree vision. A lot of the people who uh, have been on ships will describe this 360 degree vision which uh, out-of-body experience people experience and near-death experience people can, is anybody got any comments about seeing in 360 degrees? Because I think that's basically what the, what this vision is about, that you, the target can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be right in front of you. Yeah. If you're able to see uh, something in front of you, then open your eyes and check a little bit more to train, a little bit training, and you're able to see it. Um, like, uh, let's say 360 degrees. And for us, it's more interesting remote vision because it's bigger distance. Yeah. Uh, and then not distance, one obstacle, then distance in, in and time. Another type of obstacles also interesting to get information from past, from future. And of course, the vision of energy. For us, it's important because we use energy when we teach people and when we learn our, from other masters. So not just energy, because it's beautiful, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because we use it during our work. In in the United States, I've done a lot of sort of work with people, and uh, some people will report that the the American government or the intelligence people are interested, and they sort of follow what they're doing. They may not in, you know talk to them. Have you had any interaction that indicates that the the Russian government is is interested in following what you're doing over the years? No, um, in our government uh, during this 30 years, like about us knows, uh, about us knows there. <laughs> Some of them uh, even uh, bring us uh, students. There you so go. Asian and uh, from other countries and certain services, military yeah. services also, like you know, se secret services uh, yeah. uh, sent us the students. So they know, and I can say they can. Yeah, yeah, that they do. It's, it makes sense that people in government are the same as you and I. They have interests, they have, they have experiences that open them up and uh, they follow it up. So I'm, I'm glad that you're getting some, some feedback and, and helping uh, um, in that area. Cause I know in the United States, I know very high level sort of people who've got a lot of talent, they will report. And I remember the one I could tell you, he, he asked me or he asked the, the, the government people that were on his property all the time, why are you here? And then, and then he said, well, he says, it appears that you have some contacts and uh, they seem to like you and uh, we, they don't like us because they don't talk to us. So we're here to find out what are they telling you? <laughs> and that's that idea is, is if you get somebody who's got the talent, it makes sense to just find out 
why what are they doing that we're not doing they're just there's just something they they're experiencing that we aren't that we've got some prejudice or some bad ideas no uh, it, like it, it's impossible to say like all of them like you know yeah. we no, connect no. with certain open mind people yeah yeah so if they're able to make such decisions such ch changes they do it like but yeah. you know sometimes it's not possible yeah but, uh, but you know i am glad that a lot of successful in this light people and doesn't matter which country it is they use such abilities and in government in royal families and great uh, business family really powerful actually those people who make entertainment good entertainment like movies as you see now so many uh, uh, there are so many good movies which prepare human brain for usual abilities. We could see and read about teleportation, visions, sort of uh, like, you know, Superman stories. Actually, it's preparation. It's possible. Yeah. And, you know, uh, those who are small now, uh, they believe it. Yeah. Exactly. They understand it's a fairy tale now, but, you know, tomorrow, who knows? Yeah. That's like, like the, the guy who invented quantum physics, Max Planck, said, you do not you do not convince your opponent that he's wrong by showing him evidence this idea that things advance one funeral at a time and the new generation is not offended with the idea and you see that in 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 movies that it's not threatening it's not like i come to you and say you're wrong here's how it works or whatever it's indirect it's almost like this idea of uh of of little kids with magical stuff and stuff and they they you ask them is this possible sure 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 they know i mean and then as they grow older they get trained to go the other way into the the old school and they sort of lose it which i think indicated where a lot of kids will lose this is this true like if you train them and then when they get to be about 13 or 14 they will they'll sort of lose the ability or they're not training anymore or they their no, kids but if they lose, it's like it was bicycle. If you remember, okay. you did it before and you want to use it again, it will be faster to okay. refresh your memory than to learn from the beginning. Yeah. So everything is possible. And I think it's important to let people understand it's possible. There is such ability. And then it's up to you. Will you use it? Yeah. Or will not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing the work. I'm glad everybody's doing this. I'm happy to promote it and to try to move, especially with the ions. Have you been contacted by ions, Nico? Ions? Ions Institute in California. Oh, they, no, no. Okay, because they're they're very interested in this kind of phenomena. They but they're they are looking for people to, you know, do the tests and stuff like that. And I think they're fairly above board in terms of being honest and and doing the, the right sort of tests because the the dean raiden who runs it actually you know he's got experiences himself in in paranormal stuff so they understand and they've been working on this so uh we're going to do what we can to try to make sure that they that's the one institute that i think that in the united states i guess maybe the monroe institute as well where they uh will actually follow up on some of the stuff that people here are doing exactly That'd be great. And since I've seen that uh, that blue orb in the house, it's been here every single day. And it's actually a, a blue fire that floats around the living room from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7.30 p.m. So I got my tripod set up tonight wow. and uh, to record the phenomenon. And it's um, really neat and amazing. And when um, I believe it starts happening, when I'm like um, engagement with somebody, quantum entanglement, or I'm in prayer, I feel the deepest feelings of love, joy, and gratitude in my soul. And um practicing uh levitation training as well because i was looking up some representations of the blue front blue uh flame uh from some past articles and it spoke about levitations and it spoke about the deepest feelings of love and i'm like oh wow um i didn't research this prior but the phenomenon's occurring and it's beautiful yeah. one more thing um yeah. joan joan is that your real neck on the picture there <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> pleasure to see you <laughs> i'm just listening this is out of my league but very interesting thank you <laughs> <laughs> never too old never too old <laughs> never too old still yeah. trying <laughs> yeah this is these these this is spectacular stuff that's why i said to um 
uh, Leone that we should run on Olympics for kids because that was so impressive that, you know, instead of who can just swim the fastest, it's like who can go through the obstacle course with their blindfold the fastest and do all this kind of stuff. And when you see these little kids doing it and they're just lined up and they're just all excited and they're jumping and cheering people on and stuff. It's so amazing that if you could get that on, uh, you know, public people would look at it and go like, wow, it's just incredible. They just totally different attitudes. So yeah. it is. Or the bow and arrow with the blindfold I've seen on uh, on Wendy's uh, yeah. um, age yeah. as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that's especially for little kids that will get interested in that and say, "Oh, I'd like to do that too." The, you know, and and then they pick it up indirectly and they they learn the power and the the benefits from it on the side. So that's okay. cool. you activate a five year old in about three seconds. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Like, why do I need to do this? Because I can see with my physical eyes. What's, <laughs> I, what's all I, the fuss about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I experience a lot of with the, with the blindfold is taking it in the grocery store and I'll have a friend with me and um and he'll have me be independent as possible. And it's really it takes you really far. I ended up in the back of restaurants before and all the rest, or even outside in the parking lot, as long as I got a friend with me and really feeling and sensing and going through it were able to yeah. take the limits off but that's neat wow the reactions you must get are incredible <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it <laughs> okay we'll leave it at that and hopefully we can do this again and uh maybe we'll put some highlights from some of the training people have done and stuff they've they're doing and uh we'll go from there and try to move this on as as, as far as we can and make the world a better place than it was when we came here for sure thank you that's the plan <laughs> Beautiful. Darn it. I Thank missed almost the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be it's on Facebook and it'll mm -hmm. also be posted on on YouTube channels. Wendy will have it on hers and I'll have it on mine once my assistant gets back from uh sun tanning in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Grant, Thank you I very much. You, you, Thank you. Thank you. I love your name because I share the same name, my man. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Grant. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.